All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to the BB Motorsports Pots Punk Channel. It's been a while since I put up a video on the, on this series, so uh, I'm going to show you a project I'm working on here in the shop. Um, with all the engine swaps and things that I do, I found out I need a way to move very heavy objects like engines, transmissions, suspension, cradles, all that crazy stuff. I need a way to be able to move it. Now here at this place that I'm renting, um, the driveway is not paved. And that becomes a problem if you ever need to move anything really heavy outside and put it around like under the stairs for storage. Because I've got dollies, I've got hand carts, and I've tried to make do as best I can. Um, so I decided I'm going to build an off-road style utility cart. Um, looked up online, found a few uh, pictures that I'm trying to duplicate. They're, they have plans out there for them, but you have to pay for it. So I figured if I got a picture, Gives me kind of an idea of what I need to do. So I went to the local uh, metal supply store, which is Steelcon, and you know, with the COVID and all that stuff going on, uh, they won't allow you into the store. Uh, but the warehouse guy let me check out the scrap pile. We talked about what I'm doing, and we ended up going with two by two box tubing. This is 3 16 uh, wall, very thick, very strong. This thing probably end up handling over 2,000 pounds when we're done. It's gonna have six wheels, uh, one on each corner will be swivel, and then you'll have the bigger wheels in the middle, which set about an inch higher, and they'll be fixed. And so that way, you can tilt it up and down on either way, and you'll be able to steer it wherever you want, and then the big heavy weight will be supported by the big wheels. Uh, it's a lot like old mining industrial carts, something along those lines. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for the handle. It needs to be like some, honestly, like some DOM, uh, style tubing that I can come up and make a hoop. I've got something using some angle and some tubing. I don't know how well that's going to work, especially with the kind of weight we're going to be trying to move, but if it doesn't work, I can always make a new uh, push handle. So uh, I, <laughs> I spent all the money and bought the metal. It was like $147 worth of metal. I got expanded steel. I've got the box tubing. I got some uh, quite a big section of 316's flat plate. And something else I can't I can't remember what all I got, but I got over 24 feet of the two by two because they make you buy by the stick. So that was about I want to say about 140 dollars. Not bad. I need metal. I'm always doing something. So the real kicker was the wheels and the hardware. Went to the local tractor supply, and they're the only one that had the kind of wheels that I want. They're like the never flat um, off road cart style tires so I got four swivels in the eight I think they're eight inch and then I got two ten inch fixed for the center uh, yeah those those small wheels were thirty seven dollars a piece they have low capacity of like twelve hundred pounds each and the center wheels were I want to say somewhere in the twenty four twenty five dollar range so all in with all the hardware everything that I bought just now tractor supply two hundred and seventy two dollars on top of what I already paid for metal. So uh, I was I was sitting in the car after I put all this down and I got a notification, some new stuff listed on Facebook Marketplace. And uh, yeah, wouldn't you know, an industrial mining style car just went up for sale for $140 and I'll show you that here. Yeah, what are the odds that that's what I decided to do? I spend the money and then that pops up and it's about a 40 minute drive. <laughs> All you do is just, you gotta have a sense of humor, right? Alright, so I got the Miller. I'm gonna fire it up. I've already got this all cut and tacked well. I'll show you some footage of it all. I cut all this on my liquid cooled 7x13 Wilton bandsaw, which, if you can see the fit up, the gaps are so good on this. I love that bandsaw. I'm gonna weld it up using my Willer uh, Miller Matic 175 MIG weld. And, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna use the plasma cutter to cut out the expanded metal in the shape I want. And we'll just follow along. We'll see what I'm doing. I'm gonna put you on time lapse and pick up where we left off yesterday, all right? Oh, this is the part where we're supposed to say, let's get to work.
All right, the shop cart is almost done. You didn't see me, but I did it off camera. I added the handle. I don't know how strong this is gonna be. It might require some sort of bracing, but I really don't want to intrude anywhere on the loading area uh, because uh, the cradles that I have set on here are pretty wide. Um, so let's we'll see how this works. I might have to replace this with like some tube, have it bent, but uh, it feels pretty strong. Another thing I need to do, again, first time building one of these, as you can see, the wheels tilt quite a bit back and forth. Well, that's what they're supposed to do because that's what helps you steer it. So I may end up having to put in some spacer blocks in between the caster and the frame. I'm going to start out with a half inch, see how that works. I don't want a whole lot of, you know, front to back, because even on these, that's a half inch. I'd say the other side's about an inch. So we may even want to start with, yeah, a half inch might actually be perfect. So i got to flip this thing over, paint the underside, but as it is, I'd say we're good. So let me uh, put this back up on here and go over my final notes. All right, final notes on the shop cart build. Uh, number one, safety, safety, safety. If you notice during a, this whole build, anytime I used an angle grinder, the welder, the plasma cutter, you want to wear the proper safety equipment. And I'm not your mom, I'm not your daddy, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but honestly, what your fingers were, what your eyes were. You know, it's just, you only get one set. So use them wisely. Um, I could have bought this a lot cheaper as a finished project, uh, as you saw at the beginning where I bought all the material and then that cart popped up. It was a really fun welding project and honestly when you're starting welding like I am, anytime you can weld, it all just helps you get better at your craft. So on that aspect, it's invaluable because you know, can you put a price tag on experience? I like it, it turned out really good. The expanded metal uh, is pretty heavy gauge, so I don't expect any problems there. It's braced throughout. I may have to brace the uh, ab, the, the, the lead axle or the center axle a little bit, but um, I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to get this flipped over and do some more painting. No need to sit here and watch me do some uh, some painting. That, that's uh, not really high entertainment value, is it? But I appreciate you watching. Look forward to another shop build project. I've, I've got a lot of things I need to try to get done. Uh, I didn't film it, but while I was building this, let me show you what else what I was doing. All right, so, oh. so while building the shop cart, I decided I was going to mess around with my air compressor air system. And once I put this T in, so that I would have a dedicated airline to my Econo line media blast cabinet and then a separate line for my air tools, I noticed my compressor would start kicking on and off. So, <laughs> come over to my blast cabinet and I got my air in, water separator, separate regulator, and then the master <laughs> on and off for the air. Well, you heard the air escape right here. Turns out the hose that goes from here down to the foot pedal which is this line here actually had a split right where it goes in there so I have to go get get another line made now what was weird about this setup as you can see it's 3 8 on each end but it's also that's a fixed like a sleeve 3 8 3 8 in the pedal I don't understand why there's two separate lines going to here with no easy way to do it because all it's going to want to do is spin when you're trying to screw this end in. So my solution is I'm going to put in a coupler on that end and have a quick connect going to this one up here. And then I don't have to worry about twist. But yeah, I get all those lines made and then the blast cabinet starts leaking so it's fairly easy fix I just got to go get a yet another line made but yeah that turned out great I love how that worked had to make some 
a mounting plate up there and that's 3 16 it's seriously overkill but it won't fall on my head or on a car or a customer's car so I'm happy with that and that's all 3 8 so volume 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 all right before we go I loaded up now it's not a lot of weight it's five gallons of the parts cleaner solvent which is odorless mineral spirits in case you're wondering 50 pounds of glass bead for the econo line and I just took it out past the blur and onto the road and back and it worked absolutely perfect now off camera I added half inch spacers between the mounting plate and the swivel and that gives it a lot less travel <clears throat> between wheels and then greased up all the uh, zerk fittings and it is absolutely awesome all right thanks for watching we'll see you on the next shop project